Hey everyone, Carl Valeri. In one of the recent episodes of Aviation Careers Podcast, I talked about the Muscle 3 arrival into Minneapolis, St. Paul. Let's go look at that arrival, talk a little bit about some of the technical things on the approach, and then at the end, we'll answer some of your questions. So let's look at the Muscle 3 arrival into Minneapolis, St. Paul. It's a descend via with a visual approach is what we got going into Minneapolis, St. Paul. First of all, let's take a quick peek at it. It's a Minneapolis 3 arrival, uh, the CUDA transition. And this is actually the transition page. And then the next page is actually the arrival routes into Minneapolis, St. Paul. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But just as a review, what is a STAR? Well, a STAR is a standard terminal arrival procedure. It simplifies a clearance delivery procedure so that they can actually give you a STAR for this pre-prescribed uh, route into a terminal area. If you notice, there's lots of different uh, waypoints, et cetera, on there, so they don't have to give you those individually. Plus, it gives you altitudes and airspeeds. We'll go over that in a little bit. It also provides a transition from the in route structure to the terminal area. So while we're flying inbound, we were on the uh, Q812, the, the CUDA transition uh, is what we got for the arrival. But if you look to the right, that's where we are in the, the Q812. Uh, it's on the high route chart. And this, this whole arrival provides that transition. So let's take a little bit closer look here into the transition into Minneapolis. Zooming in there, just so you can actually see that CUDA, that, that uh, RNAV point that's there on the Q812. Uh, and if you notice now, we're on the actual transition. So that point, uh, that RNAV point is actually on, that waypoint is on the arrival. So it's really easy to go from where we were on the on the in route chart right here to the arrival and the transition. And if you notice in the bottom left, you're looking at all the different transitions that are shown on this chart here. So it begins, the actual star itself will begin at a nav eight or an intersection where all the arrival transitions converge. If you notice, we were just talking about the transition. So let's take a look at that, that uh, where they converge there. The arrival routes on the FA star are actually depicted by large numerals and heavyweight lines. So let's look at the FA one. And if you look here, on the right, we have the transition routes. On the left, we have the arrival routes. And notice they're, they're, those are two pages. You look at the first page on the right, then the second page on the left. And if you notice there, the la there's no larger numbers and uh, not much larger, but larger numbers, but really you can see the actual heavier weight line to the left there between muscle and bake. So you're looking at the arrival, the transitions to the right, over to the completion of the arrival on the left. So let's, uh, let's go fly it. Let's take, take a look at it. So this is what we were given. We're given the muscle three arrival, the CUDA transition for three zero left. We'll go over the approach plate in a minute. First you want to do is a review the arrival and confirm you've loaded the proper runway transition into your FMS or into your uh, GPS, whatever system you're using, uh, that you've loaded it properly. The way you know that, and especially since we're doing this 3-0 left transition, they always have this description on the uh, FAA charts, and it's at the bottom where you see 3-0 left, which is what we were given. And it'll describe all the way into from the wolves on to the three zero left transition. Well, why is that? Well, that's actually where it splits to the different runways is right there near Wolves intersection because Wolves, Lakeland, and then from there. And then at the end, it says expect the RNAV RMP or the RNAV GPS or ILS approach or vectors to final approach course from the turtle intersection there. So if you take a look right there, if you're programming, say you have an FMS or you have a system that allows you to put in an altitude, you can actually put in your bottom altitude into that if you're given a descend via clearance. You can actually place that bottom altitude. Not that we're going to go into bottom altitudes and all that right now in this video, but uh, that actually is what you can place in there. So. Let's take a look at this uh, transition. We're the CUDA transition. Here we are starting that muscle three arrival. The next point is the Shea intersection. Right about there, we were given the uh, 
chance, to, or I, sh I should say, we are given the clearance, the clearance to descend via the muscle three arrival. So at that point, we put in, remember what I said, that 7,000 feet into our FMS so that it would actually manage that descent. So here we are at Shea, and we're going to cross Camaro at 24, at or above 240, flight level 240. And then German at or above 220, but at 280. There's a line below it, line and above it. It's at 280. And you'll know that, notice that the notes, and we're not going to go over that right now, but uh, to always expect that to send via clearance with a runway transition. The next point, after that's the muscle. It's uh, at or above 17,000 and at 280 knots. Now, this is where we go over from the transition chart over to the arrival chart. So here we go. We're on the arrival chart now, 17,000 at or above and 280. Notice it's the same. Afterwards, bakes at or above 12,000 and 280 knots. You know, what altitude? You have to be above 12,000, okay? And so people always ask that. You have to be above 12, right? And the other one have to be above 17. So you let your computer system or you manage that descent on the arrival. Next point is wolves. Okay, this is where we have everything track up to wolves. If you notice the arrival route description, the first line says from muscle on, on track 276 across bakes, at or above 12 and at 280, then track 258 to Wolves intersection. That's where we actually start transitioning to our runway that we're going to use. So where are we going to go? We're going to go to the left. You got it right. Lakeland intersection. Lakeland, hey, I'm in Lakeland, Florida. So Lakeland intersection, and that's going to be above 8,000 feet. If you notice it said 280 at Bakes and it doesn't say anything else about the airspeed, no, you're below 10,000 feet, so you do need to slow to 250 knots. That is implied because it's a FAR 91. Uh, and it's in the rules. You just have to slow to 250. So next point is going to be Corey, and that's going to be at 7,000 and at 230 knots, right? Now, the next one, this is the end of the arrival. This is a uh, turtle intersection, 7,210 knots. That's the speed that you need to be at. The next thing that we actually were given is at this point, we were asked to slow to 100 and 80 knots, okay, 180 knots, and to turn left, left turn to 230, left turn to 230. And why are we doing that? Because it told us to expect radar vectors at this point. It was right before we got to turtle intersection that we expect radar vectors for the visual approach to runway 30 left. It was actually VFR that day. So now here we are. We're being vectored to 30 left ILS. Here's the ILS approach. Again, we're not going to go over everything on this approach. If you do have any questions, by the way, remember to if you see something on there that you don't understand, write to us and we can talk a little bit more about that specific thing on the approach. We could spend a whole, you know, few hours just talking about approach plates, etc. But uh, just want to describe the the remainder of what happened here. As we're descending and we're turning, they give us uh, a Descend uh, 3,000 feet, intercept the localizer to runway 30 left. Does that mean that we can go below 3,000? No. They said intercept the localizer. So then we intercept the localizer inbound. Let's zoom in on that where we turn and we intercept the localizer inbound. The next clearance uh, was uh, to descend, maintain 1,800, and you are clear for the visual approach to 30 left. And we continued on in at 1,800, and so what we do is we follow the ILS all the way down uh, to make, you know, because we were, we were a little bit higher there, we follow it down for safety reasons. It's part of our op specs at the airline. Okay, it's different. At 121, we have to follow the ILS down unless, obviously, we're given a lower altitude first. And then we move in for a landing and a nice, smooth landing and a beautiful sunset right there. Well, I hope you enjoyed that because one of the things that I think is really interesting is on this arrival, we finished the arrival with a vector to final. So things changed during that vectoring and then we, we got a, a visual approach afterwards. So we, if you have questions, by the way, about anything I talked about in that whole arrival on the approach, the visual approach, please email feedback at aviationcareerspodcast.com. Don't forget to do one thing to move forward in your career, and I'm glad that you actually watched this video. This will help you with your career going forward, especially with your technical interview. We'll talk to you next episode.